Hey guys, I'm Greg. And I'm Ashley. And this is the Living and Learning Podcast. On this podcast, we speak with fascinating guests to uncover how they've experienced life change by crossing cultures, crossing borders, and expanding their worldview. So, let's dive in. Ashley, it is so good to sit down with you here for a few minutes as we just talk about this uh, conversation that I got to have with Dr. Micah Hughes. Uh, Micah is the academic director for Baltimore Urban Studies, and he and I had a chance to sit down and just, yeah, kind of jump into a little bit about what Baltimore Urban Studies is. Uh, And so as you had a chance to hear the episode, anything in particular stand out to you? Yeah, I'm so glad I got to listen to this episode before all of you. So I get to tell you a little bit about how awesome Micah Hughes is. I just love that you uh, are going to experience Micah's compassion, his humility, and his love for people as you engage in this conversation with Greg. Um, They'll share a bit about how uh, Baltimore Urban Studies actually got started, and then they'll talk a little bit about classes and what are the offerings there at, at the bus campus. But This is an exciting new campus that we get to launch. Uh, This fall, we'll have students on the ground, and we're so excited that they get to be under amazing leadership like Micah. So tune on in. Dr. Micah Hughes, I'm really excited to sit down with you today and have a conversation about Baltimore Urban Studies. Baltimore Urban Studies is a Christ-centered campus for public health, reconciliation, and transformational learning. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot in that, uh, Mm. that subtitle. Could you help just unpack a little bit of that for us, please? Sure, sure. Well, thanks, Greg, for having us here. Really grateful. Um, Yeah, a lot of big words. And unfortunately, in the times we live in right now, uh, words are often um, misunderstood or even in some cases, uh, we've seen them weaponized. Um, So Baltimore Urban Studies is committed to being Christ centered and dependent on the Holy Spirit and only the Holy Spirit uh, because of what Jesus Christ has done can disarm these words that sometimes are used to be aggressive or divisive. And through the grace and presence of the Holy Spirit, um, the Baltimore Urban Studies is this campus that allows undergrad students from any university. It can be a Christian liberal arts school, but we also partner with HBCUs, historically black college and universities, um, as well as public you know, state schools. So you can come from any of the backgrounds um, and come and learn about public health that a lot of us saw through the past couple of years that public health applies to, yeah, doctors and nurses and social workers, but public health applies to teachers and business majors. So the campus is applied to all majors and how does public health apply to all of our vocations. And then reconciliation. We really started this campus because we were committed to seeing the work of Jesus. What what Jesus did was not just to reconcile our spiritual souls to heaven after we die. But Baltimore Urban Studies was started because we believe reconciliation is for here and now. And it's for the beautiful diverse populations and community to have reconciliation of us. That's part of Jesus' work. And we also believe that's for every major and every student. Um, And then lastly, transformational learning. So that's the outcome is that, man, we sure know that we're already different people. I'm already growing. Um, Even though I've taught, you know, for more than a decade, building the bus and having students come and work at Baltimore Urban Studies, which we call the bus, um, has been really transformational for me. And yeah, we pray that it'll be transformational for our students. 
Thanks for unpacking some of those pieces there. Um, your your role, you serve as the academic director. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm sure you wear a lot of hats, mm-hmm. but, a, but a primary one mm-hmm. is really overseeing the curriculum and the mm-hmm. academics and the mm-hmm. delivery and bringing in adjunct faculty and others. Um, you teach some courses yourself. Yeah. Could you kind of just paint broad brushstrokes about the curriculum? Yeah. You know, how many courses are there? What can students expect? Right. Um, and then maybe you touch down on, on a couple courses mm. that are of particular interest to you or maybe, yeah. Great. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. We're so, I'm biased and we're very excited about our classes. Um, we, I've just seen over the years, a lot of students that say, man, I, I want to learn public health. I want to learn about reconciliation, but there's no way I can fit this into my degree path. Like college is more and more expensive and there's pressure. We've even seen a new trend. You know, when I went to school 20 years ago, it was a lot of students did five years to graduate. But now we're seeing a trend where students are even doing three years and it's because of academic financial pressure. So we're excited about the academics because we've built the academics to allow students to graduate on time. And historically, if you wanted to study abroad or have a really immersive semester, you needed to give up graduating on time. So all of our programs are accredited through Messiah University and Messiah offers the transcript. So we have been brought in under the wing of a robust institution. And through our partnership with Living and Learning International and Messiah University, students can get a full semester of credit. So the minimum is 12, uh, but the max is 18 credits. And we have um, lab-based sciences because we've seen that when students do study away, it's often hard to do labs. So because we want to be a public health institution, we, we can, for health science majors, you can get microbiology with lab, which is required for pre-med students and nursing students and other majors, as well as nutrition and um, um, as well as epidemiology and some pretty exciting science classes. With that said, we really believe that uh, all majors should learn public health. So we also um, offer theology classes and have um, some gen ed classes, such as ethics um, and a history of Baltimore and an internship class that can be applied to any major, business major, communications major. We have a great uh, teacher internship so education you can do elementary ed high school ed middle school ed and do your full teaching um practicum at in baltimore so a lot of academics opportunities um 12 to 18 credits and it's not designed to just be interesting classes they're designed for students to graduate on time and transfer their credit uh, back to their institution cool i know you're excited about all of the courses um but i know there's two that Mm. you're you're particularly passionate about um could you just share just briefly kind of an uh, what what are those courses and what are students gonna get to engage with perfect perfect so um the story of baltimore urban studies it it really is personal for me uh because um one of the courses i want to describe is a class that's required for every single student and that is our um theology class which is called christian theology contemplative practices and social transformation so another long (laughs) title but every student takes this theology class and if you're a social work major if you're a biology major or if you're philosophy or whatever your major is all our students take it and this class is taught by reverend dante upshaw And he was my mentor and became my spiritual father 20 years ago uh, when he was teaching at Wheaton College and he directed the Christian outreach program. And so my life has been impacted by him deeply. And it's been phenomenal uh, that 20 years later, Dante is the Baltimore Urban Studies program director. He's our campus pastor and he teaches this contemplative practices and transformational class. And it is a class 
when I sit down with biology, you know, chairs of bio and social work chairs that are like, my students need to get their academic credit. Why are they, you know, why do they need to take, why is this required? Um, I, you know, muster up my PhD boots and explain the student learning outcomes that are important is that when students come, they need to learn from Dante um, and learn about how their academics translate out. And the real justification of it is that we hope students, when they come to the bus, they will have protection against burnout. So teachers have a ton of burnout. Nurses, doctors, social workers, we see burnout so significantly in the vocational practice. And I believe that this class and the training uh, that they'll get from Reverend Dante is a spiritual uh, training, both academics. I mean, he has a lot of texts in it that prepares them to do ministry and work without burnout. So that's why I love that class. That, that class sounds amazing. And as we think about really holistic mm. learning, right? Mm. I mean, yeah, you, you can go, you can go away to maybe college and, and get the, get the information, yes. but if it's not holistic, then yeah. I mean, this idea of burnout and mm. we, we want to care for mm. these students and, and set them up well. So um, yeah, thanks for, for painting that picture. Mm -hmm. um, and then I think the second course is one that, that you teach, right? Yeah. Yeah. Another class that I teach, there's a few, um, I, I really believe in co-teaching. So we have some clinicians from Johns Hopkins University. We have some social science uh, experts from Morgan State University, which is an HBCU. And uh, we co-teach the epidemiology class, the nutrition class. I could talk about those. But the one I am going to talk about is bioethics and justice. And what's really exciting is most undergrad institutions require an ethics class. And so this class meets the you know required student learning outcomes for gen ed ethics um, which we've seen that transfer from messiah university to you know a lot of others across the country but it brings um leaders of baltimore uh, from a lot of diverse backgrounds to teach about what is what are what are the questions of our time and not just philosophies of ethics that tend to be highly Greco-Roman and looking at historical uh, thoughts, but applications of undergrad ethics to um, issues of poverty, injustice, mass incarceration, you know, abortion, like really complicated topics. And uh, because of our proximity to DC, we have uh, people that come, leading experts that come from D.C. It's a 40 minute train ride to our campus in Baltimore. And we get to hear from different different viewpoints, left side, right side, um, different um, really let students just the whole class is not giving answers, but it's asking questions and their applications for social science students and for health science students, uh, for ministry majors. Um, and it's a really fun class. It feels like um, my life, you know, of the past kind of 20, 30 years, it gets to tie into that class with a community of faculty. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think as I have the joy and privilege of, of going out to colleges and universities on behalf of uh, mm -hmm. Baltimore Urban Studies and share about these programs, I, I think one of the things I love doing is sharing some of your story mm -hmm. um, and sharing about mm -hmm. Dr. Micah Hughes and, mm -hmm. and your, you, you talked about um, your spiritual father earlier, but Reverend, Reverend Dante Upshaw. And um, cause I think the two of you along with the rest of the team, but um, really are, are kind of what make this program so special. Mm -hmm. um, would you mind sharing a little bit about your story, your sure. story kind of um, mm -hmm. maybe some areas where you began this journey of, mm -hmm. of discovering mm -hmm. some of these topics that are unpacked in the, in the bus. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Yes. Okay. How much time do we have? <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, so, wow. Yeah. I think there's a lot to diff that I could say. Um, I think what's important to name is I was born in the U S um, and I lived in the United States for, you know, my early ele elementary years. Uh, but then when 
I, I moved to Cairo, Egypt, and I finished elementary school, middle school, and high school um, in Egypt and had this gift of being a part of a real international church um, and just changed my worldview. And it, it really showed me how diverse the body of Christ is. And so that was the beginning. But then I did undergrad at Wheaton College and I did a immersive cross-cultural study abroad program. Um, and that had me in northern Uganda for six months. And I really thought I knew, right? I was, I grew up overseas. So I thought that I understood a lot more than I did. And it was um, under the mentorship of Dr. Paul Robinson, who is an anthropologist. Um, and he really challenged me in my six months of living in northern Uganda to not just want to learn about diversity, but to um, kind of evaluate my own position of of how has, you know, how is social power and to be totally honest like has white supremacy mindsets like has has there been some racial bias in my own life that i thought i was immune to because i lived overseas and spending six months uh dependent on a ugandan family to eat live survive um really started to open my eyes to biases that i had and then that really caused me to feel a conviction to do work in um, bringing reconciliation into health science. And so my wife is a nurse and I've been a part of teaching global health um, for, a, for a few years. And it's just meant so much to in my life to realize that um, I need to keep learning and I have these biases um, that I didn't realize I had. So, um, yeah, the Baltimore Urban Studies uh, really came out of that long partnership between Dante and I. And I've been learning from Dante for, for 21 years. And so it's a gift to start the Baltimore Urban Studies together under Dante's leadership. Um, and apply and just keep learning. And it's been kind of this conviction that we need to learn about public health and reconciliation. We need to learn about how to work together in America. And that it's really exciting to do work in international contexts um, and then apply that work back to the US. And it's been so amazing that Living and Learning has said, let's help train North American students in in Rome and in Ecuador to learn how to come back to America. And let's also open a campus in America for students to learn how to do this work in America. So it's, it's been real personal and uh, it's, it's been so humbling to realize that through all these years, I'm still learning and I need to learn more and I can only do it with, with an amazing community. So really grateful for you, Greg, <laughs> grateful for Phil and the living and learning team and uh, grateful for community, learning and community. Well, Micah, thanks for taking some time just to share your heart mm -hmm. um, and your love of all things, your mm -hmm. love of people and of America, mm -hmm. but also your love of people from other places mm -hmm. and countries and contexts and, and bring all of those together to really bring up the next generation mm. in a way that is that is truly Christ-centered. So, Amen. So thank Amen. you. Thanks for having this conversation today and uh, excited for the bus. Mm. Thank you, brother. Thank you, Micah Hughes, for sitting down with us this week to chat about the Baltimore Urban Studies. You can catch us on our next episode as we talk about missions trip to the jungle with Peyton Corrigan. And we are excited that applications are open now for all three of our campuses. So get your application in. For more information about Living and Learning, check out our show notes. There you will find links to our website, newsletter, and all our social media. And do us a favor and subscribe to our podcast and leave a review. Thank you for listening and see you next time. <laughs>